Good evening, Jacob. Boy, it's really late where you're at. It is a little late. Evening, I, Matthew. I appreciate you uh, taking down this challenge with me. We want to see if we can be the first ones to, well, we'll call it test. I like to call it break. Um, QuickBooks Online, if possible. We're going to check out the new uh, beta receipt import process, right? That's correct. So a little bit of background to it. Uh, to try to do this test, we've got two different receipts we grabbed, made a copy of, and then we also are interested to see what happens with those transactions if they're pending in the bank feed. So if you had something equivalent to it. So we created a CSV import where we're going to actually show that part where we just pull it in, full disclosure, people can see it. And you can kind of call this an unboxing of a new app feature because we actually haven't pushed the button yet. Don't know anything how it works. So let's find out. What do you think? As I get this prepped and I'm going to share, what do you think? How do you think this is going to work for us? So my guess is initially it's not going to match to something you haven't entered from the bank feed yet. So it'll have to be in there. And then once it's in there, you can match it. And I mean, as a mineral vial product, it may not even actually match right away. We may only be able to select transactions. It may actually be um, right? Right, yes. It may just be a doc system for uh, uploaded items that then you go and manually pick a transaction for them. Yep. So we'll find out. So we're gonna go to our vendor sync account, of course. We've got our date set up here, two column, do our money spent, our money in. Look, nothing up my sleeve, you get the point, and let's go next. Two transactions, we'll go next. Thank you. And we'll say let's go. Yay, so they're now sitting here, okay? Two of them in there. Now let's go to receipts. And pulling up on my other screen here real quick are two items we need so I can drag and drop them in. Come on, computer. Oh, what just happened here? Let's go, boom. Get modified. There we go, boom, boom. Now these are JPEGs. Um, we'll see if they work okay. All right, so we've got them. We've got a little check boxes here. Processing, let's click the drop down. We're pulling info from these receipts. This might take a few minutes. I like the fact it's got time. I like the fact it'll show you the information here as well. That's pretty neat. Um, yeah, it's, it's timestamped. So obviously there's a for review and review tab there. Mm -hmm. uh, while we're waiting, what is the little question mark over by setup? receipt forwarding do for you. So when I clicked on it here, it actually pops up the little direct link to more questions and answers about it. Um, this has to do with registering your email um, for a way to, well, basically you can send emails directly in, right? So yes. something everybody with HubDoc is pretty familiar with. Um, so the, the question is if, if you already have a work if you have work set up so you can email into work, which is tied to your email address, I wonder how it understands. Oh, so you're sending two receipts at Google.com. Okay, so yeah. it is, yeah. But you're registering your email so it knows that portion of it. Right. Um, I like the idea, I like the concept. Personally, I'm not a big fan of any company that ever does a single um, email like this and then they expect that their side of it is gonna do all the parsing and get everything correct and go to the right places. Um, I was help, I was trying out the work sample of this and I never quite received my project um, that I sent in via email, but I don't know that anybody else did that one. So if we read number three there, it is telling us that it'll um, automatically pull out vendor date, total, and last four digits of the credit card number and it'll be sitting there for under review. So it is not, uh, at least in this fact, it's not saying whether it'll match or anything. Uh, it does also show here, which is uh, pretty cool, you can send multiple receipts in one email. But if you send too many file sizes, make it too big. Um, it's, so how, do, how does it distinguish between front and back invoices as one versus 
like what you capture, what you don't would be. Right. I'm assuming, I'm assuming if it's as of right now, based upon reading that, if it's multi-page, it needs to be in one PDF. Ah, good point. Um, so we're again, just kind of seeing if we'll be fortunate enough that this thing will actually like refresh on its own. I should probably refresh the screen in a second here as well, because it's probably not going to just auto refresh. Um, but before we do that, so adding receipts, we know how to do that, of course. Review, edit, or match the receipts. Select review to edit the extracted information. If there are multiple matches, select review. Select review will allow you to choose the match you want. That's pretty neat. Um, select add, but those again would be pulled in automatically already, so they already have to be accepted in or entered in. Uh, select match if you're ready to match the entry with the existing record in QuickBooks. Note that if imported bank transaction and receipt are both in for review, QuickBooks won't suggest a match until you add for one of add one of them. So that's good to know. That that answers that question. So it does have to be matched from the bank feed. So I'm doing a refresh. Or you can match it there. So, um, which means that really now you have two match steps if you're actually using this, right? Because you're going to get through your bank feed, match everything from your bank feed, or add it. And then you have to come over and yeah. match or add from the receipt tab, which is kind of a little different than auto entry hub doc and receipt bank and where they push it in and then you just match. So they've pushed it already and added it. And now you're just matching from the other side. Um, so, yeah. So let's break down that workflow real quick again, because that's actually really, really important for what, whichever way you're going about it. The method in which you do this, like the auto entry, receipt bank, so forth, that kind of a concept is it's expected you're getting that information in before you pull anything in through the bank feeds, accepting the transactions. Because if you go through the back way, you have a great opportunity of creating duplicates in there instead of actually matching things correct, right? Right, correct. Now on this one, what it's talking about, again, it's still a matter of workflow, but in this one, it seems like they're actually trying to be, they're trying to recognize the fact that maybe those receipts don't come into you right away, or maybe you get the expense report later and you want to push them in and still connect it. So it will actually look for transactions once they've been accepted through the bank feed, you can then link it and you would not be creating the duplicate, but you still get the transactional information. Which I know receipt bank has a feature like this um, for zero. And I believe they were working on it for QuickBooks as well where it told you number of items that didn't have a receipt matched. And when you got a receipt in, you could actually push it to a transaction and attach it that had already been created. Um, and I believe they were working on that for QuickBooks as well. So this would be something similar where long-term, you, maybe you can see that, oh, this many transactions don't have a receipt, right? And here's your receipts you have sitting out there, match them to them. Um, so I could see it leading that way. That's interesting. Um, another one that's been playing in this realm is LedgerSync. LedgerSync has been working on an integration with QuickBooks Online to try to be able to take check images and push them in. And they've had in beta and it does, does push it in, but it's, it's not pushing all of the data in that it needs, I think, um, like the name but you can actually match it to additional, like if the transaction's already in QuickBooks Online, you could select it and match it to it. So there's obviously a trend going that way, right? Like they're, right. everybody's pushing towards that. Um, at least they're learning. So now here's the challenge we have. Because we're trying to test this brand spanking new, we really don't know how long this is gonna take. We're about six minutes out and we don't know if this is gonna be you know, like a few minutes, are we talking football minutes? <laughs> that could last a little while, right? Right. Um, what we can do is there, okay. Hey, we got one processed. Enough said. I apologize. So um, let's check it out. Okay, did you notice before it said Panda Express and then it pulled it up and it changed to Panera Bread? Yes. Um, I'll bet you that's because we don't have Panda Express in here. Yep. Correct. So it took the next closest vendor. So it does not auto-suggest new vendors, apparently. 
That's interesting. Really interesting. Very, very good to know, right? So, right. Um, but I actually, I mean, I commend them on the fact they got it right the first time. That's really well. Cool. I think I don't think they got it right. I think the first time it read your description from the bank feed, which said Panda Express, which is down here under the description. So, let's try this. Let's exit out. Still there. I haven't done anything, right? Yep. So that's just a description. See, it says description there. Right. Um, Record. Pick. Now it did, it did pick special event food, so it recognized that it was a food receipt somehow. Um, it is interesting. Point. I think based upon this file, you probably don't have plain meals, knowing what's in this file. It, um, so special event food probably is a detail type of meals. So that is the meals account. Uh, so I it, was just doing a lot of transactions earlier, and the special event event food was one of it wasn't the last one I used but it was definitely one of the last ones I was using also yeah so um, but obviously it hasn't recognized a vendor here at least that it's showing us right mm -hmm. so let's go um, new vendor put in all panda express so the thing is I think it's already guessed the vendor in the background because it's guessing a vendor and from that vendor name it's classifying okay so I don't think it's displaying here but I think it may have already guessed that vendor but let's find out nope they had not because it is now the right I was hoping I'd break it oh well so now okay bank account we got to choose Go to our vendor sync. So again, one of the things we saw is in the directions, it does tell you that you are supposed to have accepted one or the other for it to match. So Correct. what that should mean is if we actually accept this transaction, it should then turn around and show me a match in that bank feed. Which right? would be the exact way like auto entry and receipt bank work is you process this and then you run your bank feed, right? Yep. So you can add extra notes into it. You've got your amount, description. Um, description memo, that's interesting. I want to, I wonder for sure if it's going to do a replacement or not, or if it's just adding the memo to that item. Um, I'm assuming the memo is down at the bottom. Uh, when you think about the descriptions, the line item description, the memo is the transaction memo. Yeah. Now, but when you usually, so because we're not pulling it in bank feed, I guess is why. So right. it's going to read that expense item itself. Yes. Item. yes. So save and close. Let's go save and next. Actually, why don't we not process the next one? Okay. Oh, um, create uh, expense. There you go. So it, it then went and looked for a match. So, so now we're going to create the expense. As that was a draft. So that took care of that one. So now if we go, yeah. And it will match there. Interesting. Should we accept the other one first now? That's what I was gonna, yeah, so match that one and then manually add this one, wherever you want to do that. You're going to try multi-line on it and see what happens. Whoa. Didn't say I was going to make it easy, right? Okay, so now we've got that in. Oh, okay. And now it's just a match. I'm, I'm pretty impressed on that. Pretty impressed. So now here you're just hitting match. One other line items too. Look at that. Yep. Match so as a new expense. That's cool. What okay. I didn't see the ability to was to split the first transaction to multiple lines. So you can only split right now from the bank feed and then come in and match, right? There's no way here to split into multiple lines. Um, Operation Smile apparently was the payee. That's good to know, but um, there. Yeah, which is not the, so 
that's where it recommends, but that's not the payee on correct the because, bank item. So if we match it, it should it shouldn't override it, but valid question, right? Like does it change any transactional information? Does it also create so one of the other things is the order that we do this, right? Um, the other one creates an actual expense item where it's linked to. Now let's see if the same thing happens here. We do get it, so we're good there. Yep. Bank set up onto it. Does have our split that we matched. Who's, already. who's the payee at the top? Cash that we chose. It states, it's it's cash. So it did not override that to Operation Smile. So that's good. Now I did hit the X and get out of out of it, of course. But right. that's good. Yep. Um, and then the last thing that everybody is going to say after this is, can I mark it billable? Can I assign it to a project? Because I'd really like to do that for job costing too. So, right? Which, yeah, it doesn't look like you could do that Not on yet. the receipt screen. You would have to go back in afterward and add it. Now, if you marked it that way when you added the actual transaction, so mm -hmm. if you did anything from the bank feed, then therefore it would still be there once the receipt was attached. Yeah, um, this is what I would, it's very equivalent to the idea of like QuickBooks desktop and the way with vendor sync where we're able to push the information in, but we can't do anything about the job costing part of it until you actually go to that bank feed area and then you add it in manually, right? Just right. It's just, yes, there's exactly. No place in the file to do that stuff. So, um, all right. So I have a question for you. Is this a thumbs up, thumbs down? What do you think? Uh, I think it's a thumbs up. It's moving in the right direction for sure. I mean, it's not um, It's not going to be at the auto entry receipt bank level yet, but obviously it just rolled out, right? It's a very first iteration. Most of us don't even have this in our files yet. Um, so I think it's pretty good for their minimal viable product, right? Yeah, I do too. I think it's... Um... It's definitely neat to see it. It, I don't know. It's probably going to mean that now, as a bookkeeper or an accountant, whatever, we're going to actually have to do more of this attaching stuff. But that's okay. So, right. and that was way too fast for that to get done for it to be somebody else's eyes looking at it. Yeah. Valid. So, I know. I mean, if you go back in history into it, obviously it has a great. OCR technology from the TurboTax side and SnapTax. If you remember, SnapTax was, I'll just snap a picture and we prepare your tax return for you. So, I mean, they have that OCR technology from then and they've obviously improved it since then. Um, so I'm sure they got some really good OCR over there, which will eliminate the need for manual review a lot. When OCR, optical character recognition, truly is just flawless, that is when you will finally see automation actually come to life. Sure. But until then, that's going to be hard. Yep. Jake, thank you so much for doing this uh, new feature beta unboxing. It was interesting to see it. I love your perspective on it. And um, Thanks for having me. Hope you have a very successful week. You too.